Welcome to episode two of Budget Gun Breakdown, where I go out to the used cabinet and our other racks, and I grab all the lost, forgotten, lonely, needing to be adopted, budget-friendly firearms. For those of you out there who might be considering, hey, I've never heard of that, or hey, I'm on a budget and I'm looking for something that actually is worth something and is gonna be able to fit my needs. So today what we have is the Bursa Thunder 380. This specific one right here is the concealed carry model. So everything is kind of shaved down on it. It has really low sights. It has no uh, exposed hammer spur back here. So, but for the most part, a Bursa is a Bursa. We're gonna take it out here. We're gonna try some stuff out, see if we like the Bursa, and we're gonna give it a rating, talk about the pros and cons. So this one is 380, so we are running some just cheap Federal American Eagle here. We're gonna see how she handles it. All right, so we got our eight round mag loaded up, very similar to what you'd see in like an older Smith & Wesson shield or something like that, or maybe even a smaller 1911. <clears throat> now the Bursas are pretty cool because they do have that uh, magazine disconnect. So even if you did have a round in the chamber, if you wanted to carry eight plus one, as long as you keep that mag out of it, safe or fire, doesn't matter. The gun's not gonna go off until this mag goes in. All right, we're loaded up. Let's go ahead and put that gun on fire. There we go. We do have a loaded chamber indicator, which is quite nice. Let's go ahead and do a few hammered pairs. Let's see how we handle it. Woo. Uh, one of those I dropped very low. Okay, so first thoughts. These concealed carry sites, very hard to pick up quickly because they're so tiny. But if this was something you wanted to keep in a purse or a pocket or something like that, they do serve a purpose. Let's uh, load it back up, do a couple failure stops, see if we can't improve on that a little bit. All right, this time we're gonna start in the double action with a round in the chamber. So right now this gun is loaded. I see my loaded chamber, chater, uh, loaded chamber indicator is ready. But like I said, it doesn't do anything at all because the magazine is loaded. So now we're ready to go. The gun is still on safe. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on fire. And we're gonna do some to stops. Two in the chest, one in the head. A little high on the head shot. Let's come back. Here. A little better. A little better. It's quite smooth. Because it's 380 and it is a metal gun, there's very little recoil, very little. Now I have very large hands and a very firm grip, so recoil doesn't bother me as much, but if you are a person with smaller hands and you grip the gun a little lighter than me, having a little bit of a heftier 380, that's gonna be a very comfortable gun to shoot. Let's see if it can shoot fast, however, and let's try out those build drills. All right, we got six loaded up. We are gonna start with the hammer cock to the rear and that single action. Let's give her a whirl, see how she goes. Very little recoil, very smooth shooting little gun. The sights do make it harder to aim, but like I said, they make tons of different models of these with lots of different sights. Let's try that build drill one last time and then we'll, fire, we'll give it a good rating. All right, one more time. Let's see how she goes. Forgot I had seven there for a second. Ah, <laughs> right, let's get Zach out here. Let's talk about it. All right, so what do we think of the Burst Thunder 380? Now, First off, price point. Now, let's keep in mind in the context that this gun is gonna be less than $300. So, man, for less than 300, you're really getting a lot here. You're getting double single, and that single action is quite nice. Um, this is the concealed carry model, which personally, I probably wouldn't choose because I like larger, high, easier to see sights. Yeah, the, these things, if they are a 16th of an inch tall, you can't. It's, it's stretching it. Right. Um, I love the magazine disconnect, especially just for an added kind of measure of safety. You could have this gun completely locked, loaded, ready to go, and as long as this was kind of 
next to it or somewhat away from it. If a kid picks this up or something like that, it's it's got that whole extra layer of safety in there. Well, let's not forget about the factory. Instead of a trigger lock, it has an internal trigger lock too. Right. So they have a key trigger lock system on bursas to where you could even have the mag loaded one in the chamber and then have the entire trigger assembly just completely connected with the key. Similar to how it's working. Yeah, the safety is really sprung. It sprung really well, so I can give it a little bit of a flick and it comes off really nice. All in all, the controls feel like the controls of a very high quality gun, which I really, really like. Now the gun being a 380 is very slim. So someone with larger hands like me, it feels a little weird to shoot, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. But because it has that heft to it, like I talked about earlier, and it's a 380, there's no recoil at all. So if you are that smaller frame person or smaller handed person, this gun's gonna be an absolute dream to go out and actually practice with, which really matters. Yeah, absolutely. So, hey, in the last episode, we gave the CP6, I gave it a seven. I don't know, an eight because of the customer service, an extra point. I'm gonna put this gun at a 7.5. I'm gonna go a little higher because even though it is an import gun, I think that for very little additional money, you're getting a lot of extra gun here. So I'm gonna give it a seven and a half. So I'd actually never shot a Bursa until today. <coughs> Excuse me. This thing reminds me of a Walther PPK quite a bit. Sure. I think it's fairly similar architecturally. But when I think, let's see this guy, the first person I think of is my grandma. I, I literally think that the slide's light enough and it's a semi-auto and it's a heavy enough frame that you're not gonna feel a lot of recoil. Yeah. Uh, it's nice, light enough to where, you know, arthritis hands can rack it. Mags are really easy to load. Yeah, and then the mag capacity is eight. Better than any snub nose ever out there that's in a, in a center fire cartridge. So I'll give it a seven, solid seven. I think the gun's fairly slick. I think that being a metal frame is really nice. I think being slim is nice. It's easy to hide in a purse, on a body, whatever else. And I think it bodes well to people with weak hands being able to shoot it. So sure. And then I even shot it a couple times off camera with uh, weak side one handed with the, the worst grip possible and was still, it wasn't bad at all. So I'll give it a solid seven. I think it's a really, really nice gun. All right, guys, coming in strong, second episode. Never know what we're gonna find next in that used rack. Stay tuned, check out the next budget gun breakdown video. We'll see you next time. And real quick before we end this, that you just ended. <laughs> I wanna make it a very clear point here that we will inevitably find something that is a giant piece of shit. Eventually. And then we will make sure that we clarify where this is not gonna be every gun under 300 bucks is awesome. So take it for what it's worth. Do your own research. We're going to give you as much information as we can on things we see frequently. That's it. So, till next time, Andrew, Zach, we'll see you.